Hello? Hi, sweetheart. It's me. Honey bear. I missed you on Christmas. I missed you too. How did um the family gathering go? It was more wonderful than I could have imagined. Good, I'm glad. But now, Christmas is over. I'm going to talk to Stephanie today. You and I have a wonderful future ahead of us. Your honey bear loves you. I love you too, honey bear. I'll be waiting for you. Okay. <sighs> Wonderful, you're here. Did you see Rich? No, no, I didn't. Well, he was just here. How's he holding up? Well, it's hard losing a child. It's, I think, even harder this time of the year. He really needs Rick to go to Paris. I was talking to Brooke about that. He needs it, and I think so. I'm not going to send Rick to Paris. Eric. I'm not. But I'm not going to exile Rick off to Paris when he's in desperate need of support from his family. I'm not going to do that. Well, and Ridge isn't desperate. He needs to recover. How does he do that with Rick there in his face every day? He's a lot stronger than you think. How can you say that? He's lost a child, and Rick is responsible for her death. Look, he's going to have a lot of support here. That's why I want Rick to stay here, too, for that kind of support. This family is not short of support at all. You, of all people, should know that. It's in his best interest that he goes to Paris, and it's in his mother's best interest that she makes sure he does that. He is her son. And he's hurting. So she's giving up on the marriage to Ridge? No, of course not. Well, Ridge isn't going to want it. Why should he? Her son is responsible for his daughter's death. How does he forget that? Ridge and Brooke will settle their differences about Rick. How is he supposed to do that? Is he just supposed to forget about his daughter? Okay, every marriage has its difficulties. Ridge and Brooke will get through this. Look, there's something I need to tell you. Thorne did something that I want you to know about. What? The reason I broke it off with Donna is that Thorne hired two models that looked like Owen and Donna, and he set up a video camera in Owen's office and got them to get hot and heavy in there, and he made certain that I saw it. Well, this is absolutely preposterous. No, it's not. Thorne admitted it to me. He just came to you with this? No, Owen found out about it, and then he pressured him to come to me. Yeah. Where are we going with this? All my assumptions about Donna have been wrong. So you're giving up on us? I love you, Stephanie. And I know I said that you and I would be together forever. And Christmas but in this house... you didn't answer my question. You did say that we, a month ago, would be together forever. And I... I took you at your word, as I always do. So, now, what? You're, you're leaving me and you're going back to Donna? Just say it, Eric. You're walking out again. I'm calling off my divorce to Donna. I ended our marriage under false pretenses. Now, let me get this straight. You saw what you thought was Donna and Owen making love, and you believed it. The question is, why did you believe it? You know why? Because you don't trust her. You never have and you never will. That's simply not true. Oh, so you're willing to spend the rest of your life wondering where she's been, who she's been with, and the last man that called. Was that really a wrong number? I understand that this is hard, Stephanie. Eric, somewhere inside you know this girl isn't worthy of you. You know she'd be just really happy with a young man that doesn't have to hold his tummy in when he's got uh, a bathing suit on. And she'd be just as happy to be with him as long as he could house her and clothe her in the style to which she has become accustomed. She would be with him just like that. So let me get this straight. You only pretended to care for me because you thought she didn't want to have anything to do with you? Look, I thought we could have an adult conversation. Oh, you know, I'm just so tired. <laughs> of, 
of expecting you to be somebody that you're not. You know, somebody who had values and goals as opposed to a man who simply thinks of nothing but pleasure. Well, that is such a dirty word to you, isn't it? Pleasure. After you and I spent all those years building that business we built, that's based on that. Yeah, you know, pleasure isn't all there is to happiness, but it certainly helps. And what about substance? My hair goes white, I lose my figure, and you decide you want to make Google eyes across the table with somebody else for the rest of your life? Where were all of your women when you were in that hospital bed? You love telling me that nobody cares about me except you. You win. You win. I don't care anymore. But don't come back here when you wake up alone again. I mean it. I'm, I'm through. I'm finally done. How much humiliation is one person supposed to take? Have you ever met a man you genuinely liked? Of course I have. Someone you looked up to, admired? Someone who uh, actually came up to your standards aside from your oldest son, of course. What do you suggest? Oh, no, wait, you have. You have, actually. We can't speak his name, though, because of all the all the abuse that he you heaped on my father. I do mean your father. You claim to despise him, and yet he's the only model of masculinity you accept. I've known quite a few kind, decent, and good men in my life. Awesome. What? Why didn't you marry him? I often ask myself the same question. You got pregnant with his baby, and then you... Uh... You marry me, and then you rail at me for the rest of my life about how spineless I am and how much of a weakling. If I hadn't been a weakling, I wouldn't have married you. You got exactly what you wanted. I was the one who was cheated. You accused Donna of trapping me into marriage, but no, no, that was, that was you. Donna has given herself to me freely. You demanded my future, my dignity, my firstborn, everything. Oh, that debt is paid. I'm not paying anymore. You're walking away the winner here. You get the house, the business, the bride that wasn't even born when our children are in grade school. And you want me... To say that you're right about everything and always... Uh, no, no, of course not. Oh, well, good. I'm glad you're giving me that much. How about one more little fig leaf of dignity? You're not walking out on me. I'm leaving. Well, you can call it what you want. I'm not coming back. Woe to the bookie who takes bets on that. Am I fired? I don't remember hiring you back. Am I fired? Oh, for God's sake. I didn't want this to degenerate into some kind of an argument here. Oh, well, that's good, because you know you wouldn't get that show mounted tomorrow if I'm not there. Oh, God, you're right. We have a meeting about that in the morning. 9 a.m. I'll see you then. No, wait, wait, wait. I thought you were walking out of my life forever. You'll never be rid of me. Yeah, and you're the one who has six guns registered in her name. Well, I suppose that says something, doesn't it? All the abuse you've heaped on me all these years, I never shot you. 